Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Alpha Imaging Ambassador. I'd like to walk you through how I've set up my A9 camera for shooting fast action sports photography. Okay, so for those who don't have a lot of time to spare and are not prepared to go through the extended movie, uh, we can basically cover these following settings that I'll be using. And that is to set the drive mode to continuous. I'll be using high 20 frames per second. The focus mode also to continuous or AFC. Uh, the focus uh, area to tracking, one of the many tracking options there. Uh, now, typically a lot of sports photographers will use shutter priority, but I actually use aperture priority as my shoot mode. And I use this in conjunction with ISO auto and ISO auto minimum shutter speed to control my shutter speed. And I'll also be looking at how I uh, um, uh, modify my uh, steady shot settings by setting the steady shot setting to mode two on my sports lenses. These are typically the white Sony lenses. For those people who have got a little bit more time, I do want to go into a little bit more depth uh, for those people who really want to master this uh, fabulous A9 camera. And so we'll be going into more than 10 settings and these include drive mode, focus mode, focus area, tracking sensitivity, priority settings, whether we're going to do balanced emphasis, uh, AF or release, uh, shoot mode, shutter speed, steady shot settings, IAF and uh, face priority settings which can override your focus area and also the record media settings. Now many people uh, miss uh, fast action shots uh, because there's more than one setting you have to set up. It's usually about getting uh, a group of settings and we can uh, fast track this process by then uh, register them in one of the camera's memories uh, so you don't have to remember every single setting. Uh, so sit back, um, take some time, maybe take a few notes or, or just pause me when you think you've had enough um, and then move on uh, later we'll go into the drive mode. Now uh, we're going to be setting this to one of the continuous shooting modes. Now high is very fast, it's 20 frames per second, uh, but it does ensure that we get the decisive moment in the action. If your action is uh, working a little bit more slowly or unfolding over a longer period of time, you may consider going down to medium, which is 10 frames per second, or slow, which is five frames per second. Now these are all using the electronic shutter. If we uh, instigate the mechanical shutter, uh, the highest frame rate will be five frames per second. So um, uh, we need to look at that uh, shutter type uh, as one of the next things we do. Now by default it is set to auto, so when we uh, move into continuous shooting 20 frames per second, that will typically select the electronic shutter, sometimes referred to as silent shooting in the A7 III and A7 R3 cameras. Now um, as I said, the electronic shutter will be selected usually by auto, but if you need to move it out of mechanical for any reason, then just remember that we can do that. Now it's on um, page five of the of the second camera setup menu um, so you will need to dig a little bit deep to actually find that. I typically assign this to my function menu so I've got quick access over this feature and we'll look at the uh, setting up the function menu over subsequent slides. The other thing that will happen is if you're shooting with the electronic shutter, any shutter sound is a simulated uh, shutter sound. We can actually go into completely stealth mode and switch all audio signals off and the camera will work completely silently. Now one of the problems of a camera shooting at 20 frames per second silently is sometimes we're not absolutely uh, aware that the camera is taking shots. So uh, Sony have sorted us on the A9 by giving us a visual cue to let us know that the camera is uh, shooting frames. Now uh, head over to the sem second camera setup uh, menu again. This time it's on page eight. Now the uh, the little visual cue that I like using is um, type two. Now this will put um, a little blue flashing blocks uh, box around your focus area when you're actually shooting. And so this is a useful uh, visual cue to you are actually taking shots. The next main important area that we need to consider is the focus mode. 
we need to come out of single AF and go into continuous AF so we can track our rapidly moving uh, subjects over time. So AFC is what you need to use and it's probably worth leaving this camera in this focus mode uh, pretty much by default. One of the other things that we can consider is if you're a back button AF shooter uh, that's where we disengage the shutter release from any focus uh, duties. Uh, we can set that up in uh, page 5 of the first camera setup menu. Now just uh, simply go over to AF with shutter and switch that off. Now if you're not accustomed to using back button AF workflows then don't feel that you are missing out by not doing this. Uh, there is no performance advantages uh, these days by using a back button autofocus workflow. Uh, we can get all of the performance by leaving the um, focusing on the shutter release. Uh, I don't have anything against back button autofocus and if that is what you're accustomed to you will want to put this in place on this camera. Okay, now moving along, uh, pre-AF. Now it's not on by default, but if you switch it on, for instance, some people may switch it on if they're doing a selfie with this camera. So the camera focuses as you move into position on the uh, shooting time delay. Uh, just make sure that that is switched off for sports action shooting because it can interfere with the tracking. Uh, it'll start locking onto subjects before you give permission for the camera to instigate the tracking. And so just make sure that pre-AF is switched off by default focus area. Now focus area uh, has changed with the version 5 firmware update. Typically we would often use something called lock on AF. This has been replaced by a much superior tracking option. Now focus area is assigned to the C2 custom key by default but if you've um, overridden that just be aware that this is an important feature you do want to change as we're working with the camera. Now by default I suspect when you pull an A9 out of the box or do a firmware update it resets itself to wide which is not one of the tracking options. So if you go into focus area just a cycle up going up is quicker than going down to access the tracking options. Now I would actually uh, consider setting wide not one of the spot or zone AF areas as your default. Um, now I'll talk a little bit more about why I would set the wide as the default over subsequent slides. If you go into uh, the AF areas and you're wanting to make an adjustment, just get used to uh, making those adjustments using the front dial. Um, it's very important that when we're changing settings rapidly during shooting that we can do this without lowering the camera from the eye. So just get used to uh, changing settings uh, using the EVF and using the front and rear dials. The front dial will change the main uh, options. The rear dial will Will change the sub menus in a particular option. Now real-time tracking uh, was first released on the A6400 and after using this feature I was pretty convinced that this is the best tracking feature for any camera and now the A9 has it too. In these examples you can see even when somebody walks in front of the camera uh, the camera carries on tracking uh, the primary target even though there's little uh, left in the viewfinder for it to hang on to. And Time and time again I found that this is an ultra reliable feature. If it's found an eye and face priority IF is switched to on, it will switch to tracking an eye. But if that eye is temporarily obscured from view, the camera will go to the nearest texture or part of the subject that it was tracking. It is not um, um, uh, misled into pulling focus on the arm that uh, momentarily appears in front of the face. And this is uh, a very reliable feature and one that I would uh, encourage you to use as a default. If you find that the um, the AF tracking icon, which is that little box with a bar either side, appears to be a little bit laggy, it doesn't seem to be tracking the subject in real time, you might consider um, lowering the uh, find a frame rate from high to standard. If you don't notice this, then you can actually leave that frame rate in high.
Now let's go back to that uh, focus area and, and discuss why I think wide should be your default. If I look through most people's uh, sports action shooting, typically the, um, the subject, the primary subject that they're following is front and center in 95% of their images. And wide can be uh, reliably uh, um, relied on to uh, always pick up that subject if it is front and center in the viewfinder. Now, wide isn't a very reliable uh, AF uh, decision to make on a DSLR. So if you're coming over from DSLRs, you're probably using a spot focus um, rather than wide. And one of the reasons for that is wide on a DSLR is not actually very wide and in this instance trying to track this bird you would actually miss the bird and start pulling focus on the background. While I look at uh, focus um, over the next uh, few slides, it is important to note that it isn't just Sony who have lots of options. Um, I was looking at a Canon 5D Mark IV manual and noticed there were 59 pages dedicated to autofocus. Uh, I don't actually think that um, the focus systems on Sony's are that complicated. And again, we can assign the starting point settings to one of the three camera memories. You'll be pleased to hear that a uh, wide on a Sony camera uh, pretty much covers the entire uh, sensor. We have focus points um, over 98% of the sensor area on recent uh, releases of Sony cameras and we can pick up um, a subject even though it's not that close to the center of the frame as in this instance here. Now you will um, rely more on wide when you see how reliable that focus area is over time. So give it a shot if you're not used to using that wide focus area. Now uh, I would uh, like to point out that we can quickly override the wide focus area if we need to pull a focus uh, point to start the tracking. If you have focus standard set to the multi-selector, that should be a default. Um, so if you've overridden that, uh, just uh, try this workflow out. And that is to uh, depress the focus selector um, when you're working with a wide focus area and that will invite you to lock on to the, the, the point that is closest to the center of the screen. So we can um, point the center of the screen uh, to the subject, then reframe and have the camera track that object even though it, it doesn't have to be in the center of the screen all of the time. So again, another way of quickly coming out of wide focus area uh, rather than actually going into the focus area options. Now, um, typically by default that uh, custom to key is set to focus area and I would encourage you to reassign it if you've assigned uh, C2 to something else. If you have assigned C2 and you want to leave it then consider assigning C1 to that function instead. It is one of the uh, features that you do want to change periodically when um, uh, working with fast action sports and you want to be able to access it without lowering the camera from the eye. Uh, once you do press the C2 key then you can use the front dial uh, to move up and down the focus areas. Once you get to the tracking you'll be using the rear dial on the back of the camera, the one at the top of the camera not the control wheel, uh, to adjust those sub menu options. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the reasons I might come out of wide. Here I'm going into zone uh, because that um, horse that is in uh, towards the center of the screen might uh, allow the camera to jump focus and pull and start tracking on that horse. And I'm typically wanting the cowboy who's dismounted and is slightly further back than the two horses. So just by selecting zone and lowering that zone to bottom right of the camera, the camera will then pull focus on the subject that is uh, center and close in that zone, ignoring all other subjects outside of that zone. Ever so occasionally, and it is really just the 5%, I will actually use a spot AF 
uh, to start tracking. In this instance you'll see that the, the dog is running through tall grass and because uh, cameras are quite keen to pull focus on something that is close and center quite often you might find that the camera is pulling focus on the grass and then tracking the grass which is not moving rather than the dog that is moving. So really you could possibly do this in zone just by moving the zone to center top of the frame and then starting the tracking process when the dog is at the top of its bound. But if you're uh, ever concerned that you might pull focus on that grass, then I would just then maybe move to spot. Um, this is incredibly difficult uh, for many um, amateur photographers to actually put um, a spot on a moving target, which is one of the reasons that I do encourage photographers to explore uh, wide and zone before spot. But if you can, and you've got the practice and you've got the skill, and you can put um, a, a spot focus point using the multi-selector or joystick on the eye of a moving bird, then by all means go for it. In this instance, I've actually succeeded in doing that. And uh, you can see the depth of field is quite shallow using a 400 f2.8 lens. And so I've managed to put that um, focus point on the eye during um, the, uh, the flight path of this bird. Another reason, and it's probably a more common reason to use a spot, is if we use a, a spot AF point uh, when the bird is off center, maybe it's perched in a tree or in this case on the top of that post, uh, once it starts tracking that bird reliably, the bird can move into the center of the frame and it doesn't really matter whether the spot was originally on the side of the frame, the, the focus will start tracking across the entire um, screen if necessary. And in most instances, the uh, photographer's reactions are slightly delayed behind the bird taking flight. And so if you do have the bird on one extreme edge, then it will move into the center of the frame and it'll then allow you to start panning maybe a, a fraction of a second later. While we're talking about spot AF points, uh, one of the new features of the version 5 firmware update is if we move the spot all of the way to the edge of the frame, if we carry on moving it, it will reappear on the other side of the frame if we use the circulate feature. Now that is on page six of the camera setup one menu, if that is an option that you would prefer. If not, it will just hit to the right side of the frame and stay there and then you'll have to pull it back to the center um, if you need to uh, recenter that focus point. So uh, some people have often uh, said on forums uh, they, w they wish they, uh, Sony would actually um, um, make the uh, spot AF point a different color because when it's in a stationary point it's actually quite difficult to pick up if the subject that you're photographing is quite busy in tone and texture. Now one of the ways you can actually color the focus point orange is by doing this um, following over the next couple of slides which I I will outline. The first thing is to go into your custom key settings and then uh, make sure that you've got focus settings assigned to one of the custom keys. Now if you press that custom key and then start moving the focus area, I'll just go back a couple of slides, uh, the focus area will not be white anymore, it will move in the orange color and that might uh, help you pick up that focus area a little bit more quickly. That might take a little bit of practice because it does uh, require that you um, um, assign a custom key and press that custom key before moving that focus area. Hopefully one day uh, Sony may decide to um, change the color of that focus area so we can pick it up more easily, especially with the spot AF points. Let's just uh, moving um, forward on, on those slides. Focus area limit. If you're using just three or four, maybe five or six uh, focus areas, that means that you're not using all 14 focus areas. So rather than cycling through focus areas that you never use, you can actually remove them from view. So you can cycle through the available focus areas that you do use more quickly. So, and this is um, on page four of the first camera setup menu, and it's focus area limit. Yeah. 
just go to over to any of the focus areas that you don't use and uncheck those boxes and then select OK and those will be removed from view. Okay, another thing that you may want to consider uh, when um, tracking your subjects is tracking sensitivity. Now um, it's set um, to number three by default um, and I just wanted to uh, discuss this subject uh, in a little bit more detail because a lot of people bump it up to number five which is called responsive. Responsive sounds good so a lot of people do bump it up to five but what happens when you set it to number five it's uh, the focus is more likely to jump from your primary subject that you are tracking onto an alternative subject if the camera thinks it can pull focus on that subject more easily. For a lot of sports photographers, this is not appropriate. If you're tracking somebody with the ball, you don't want to jump to another player just because you can pull better focus on that player when they don't have the ball. Now this might be um, um, a less of an important point if you're tracking maybe zebras in Africa and any sharp zebra would do. In that case, uh, choose five by all means. But for many sports photographers, they would be encouraged to drop that down to number one with the bracket locked on. Uh, you may uh, have one or two shots in the sequence that are not ultra sharp, but it does mean the camera will stick uh, to your primary target for much longer. Now if this is an important setting that you do need to adjust depending on what you're shooting I would encourage you to assign tracking sensitivity to the function menu so you can quickly access that and then if you just roll over that you don't actually have to depress that option using the center of the control wheel or pressing the multi selector in just highlight it with the multi selector and then use the front dial to move left or right over the tracking sensitivity. Again, um, this is good practice to start adjusting settings while the camera is at your eye. So you don't miss a decisive moment because you're going into menus uh, using the monitor rather than the EVF. Another important settings when we're talking about focus is the priority settings in AFS and AFC and obviously for action we're more interested in the priority settings in AFC or continuous focus. Now um, the uh, balanced emphasis is the default but I would encourage you to move to release if you're not a back button AF shooter. This means that um, the camera will always take the, the, the shot the, the split second you press the shutter release even if the camera isn't absolutely convinced it has focus. It also ensures you're getting the maximum frame rate. So 20 frames per second is 20 frames per second. If you uh, have that set to AF or balanced emphasis the camera will start dropping shots in the sequence if it ap isn't absolutely convinced that it has focus. In many instances, even with release selected, I'll review a whole sequence and find that they all are sharp. It, the camera hasn't dropped a shot at all. And I've got the full sequence of images and this is what I prefer. I would always prefer deleting an image in post-production rather than not having the image at all. Even if it was ever so slightly soft, if that is the decisive moment, the chances are I could still uh, sell that image to a, a magazine even if it wasn't 100% uh, sharp. Let's go over to um, shoot mode. Now um, a lot of uh, sports action shooters will use S, shutter priority, but there are a couple of reasons that I don't on mirrorless systems. I will be using aperture priority instead of shutter priority. Now I have to do this in conjunction with using uh, uh, auto ISO or ISO auto and ISO auto minimum shutter speed because uh, I do need to control the shutter speed the camera is using but I can do that in aperture priority and doing that in aperture priority has a couple of advantages. It does mean that I can always prioritize exposure even though I have a preferred shutter 
shutter speed. In many instances when the camera can only roll aperture a certain degree uh, we can find ourselves maybe selecting f22 uh, when we're wanting um, to use uh, panning with blur. Now um, tracking will be disabled with f22. The A9 camera does have a minimum aperture of f16 when tracking the camera. Also in shutter speed it is possible um, or shutter priority it is possible to over or under expose the image if the camera has to use that shutter speed and I would prefer to prioritize exposure even if the camera has to move off my uh, preferred shutter speed. Now I do have a movie uh, on uh, ISO auto minimum shutter speed if you need to go that in, in in a little bit more detail. If you do decide to go along with aperture priority first of all you must select uh, ISO auto and you can do that just by pressing the right side of the control wheel and then setting that to auto. Now we can move right um, I press the uh, right side of the control wheel again in order to set the uh, the upper limit of of the, um, the maximum ISO that you prepared to have that camera go up to. Now often with sports action photography we will be using the higher ISO settings. Now some it really depends on your pain threshold now how high are you prepared to go before that shutter speed has to start slowing down below your recommended or preferred shutter speed. Now for some people that will be 6400, for other people that will be 12400 or even higher. Now I have pulled um, a reasonably good uh, low noise images off um, uh, uh, images that I've captured at 6400 and 12800 ISO. Now this is a personal choice but it's something worth considering in this workflow. Now um, we need to go into the main menus if you haven't uh, set ISO auto minimum shutter speed to maybe your, your function menu or a custom key. Now you'll find that on page 8 of the first camera setup menu. It's been grouped into a new menu called ISO setting. Now you can't access this by pressing the right side of the control wheel. You will need to go into the menus to do this. In, inside of this ISO setting we have three options. Uh, one is the, well the bottom one on the bottom there is ISO auto minimum shutter speed. This is where you can come in and override the default into a preferred shutter speed. Now I wouldn't expect you to come into the menus to set that recommended shutter speed each time you want to modify that preferred shutter speed. So I would then encourage you to assign it to a function. Now typically I will uh, have a, as a starting point and I will put this into the memory of one of my action settings uh, as one two thousandth of a second. One two thousandth of a second will tend to freeze pretty much anything in sports uh, right from somebody uh, running or cycling very rapidly towards the camera all the way up to motorsports very occasionally I might want to use something even faster such as one four thousandth or one eight thousandth of a second but it as displayed in this particular image it will freeze the action. I typically don't use slower shutter speeds for movement blur when the action is coming towards the camera. Now um, sometimes I will slow the shutter speed to get movement blur behind my subject but in some instances I will still freeze the subject as in this case even if the subject is moving left to right or right to left. Uh, in this instance I've uh, completely frozen the character uh, who's uh, lost his um, kite surfing board. Okay so um, uh, we can uh, go into that ISO auto minimum shutter speed if we do need movement blur behind our subject and choose a, a slower shutter speed. Now this is relative to the speed that the camera is moving and not the speed that the subject is moving. 
Now you can uh, select a, a specific um, shutter speed or you can just go down from ISO um, auto standard to slow or slower. Now this is a reciprocal relationship with the focal length of the lens. So if you're using 400 millimeters, if you set slow, the recommended shutter speed now will be half of that shutter speed, one two hundredth of a second. And if we go down to slower, it'll be one one hundredth of a second. Now your panning skills will need to be very good if you're panning a 400 mil focal length and you're attempting to get uh, that movement blur at one one hundredth of a second. Here I'm using uh, a shutter speed maybe in between 1 250th, 1 500th of a second. Uh, in order to get that slower shutter speed, I will have to start um, closing the aperture down uh, below that typical f5.6 that I might be using by default. I'll now start closing down to f8, f11. Now with the version 4 firmware, we couldn't close down more than f11 in order to slow that shutter speed. Now after the version 5 firmware update we can close down to f16. It is worth noting in low ambient light the tracking will be slightly less reliable if we're closing that aperture down. Um, uh, focus tracking becomes more reliable uh, the more light uh, the sensor is receiving so just bear that in mind. Okay, and that's why I've put the caution there. Just uh, if we were in shutter speed priority and we were trying to um, select a shutter speed of maybe 1 125th of a second in bright sunny conditions, it would force the aperture down to f22 and then tracking uh, the phase detect autofocus tracking would be disabled. And so that is one of the and another reason, good reason to use aperture priority rather than shutter uh, priority as the shooting mode. Now if you are panning, uh, it is uh, probably very important to realize we need to um, uh, put that um, steady shot setting on the lens to mode 2. This basically uh, disables the steady shot in the horizontal axis. Now if you don't have those steady shot settings on the lens and uh, your subject is moving erratically and you're moving the camera, I would go into the camera settings and switch off steady shot in camera. You really don't need to have steady shot on uh, if the camera is moving and you're using fast shutter speeds. So on the um, the new 402.8 sports lens, there is actually a mode three for erratic movements that doesn't always just include uh, left, right, right, left uh, horizontal panning, but also uh, when the camera moves vertically as well, such as in some ball sports where the ball is kicked very high. Because ISO auto minimum shutter speed is an important part of the aperture priority workflow, I would not only consider assigning it to the function menu, I would also consider assigning it to a custom key. Uh, I've actually assigned it to custom key 1. Um, or custom button one uh, because uh, that typically is assigned to white balance and because I'm a raw shooter and I can correct white balance in post I don't need to assign a very important custom key on the top of the camera uh, for something that I don't move uh, so I have assigned uh, auto ISO or ISO auto minimum shutter speed to that custom key one. You'll find that on page 4 of 13 when you've assigned um, that um, uh, feature to the function menu, you simply have to press the FN button and then use the front dial to assign a specific um, shutter speed, your preferred shutter speed, and uh, use the rear dial if you come to one of the settings which has a sub menu such as standard fast faster or standard slow slower. Now you will have that as a heads up display in the EVF. Again you do not need to lower the camera uh, from your eye in order to change these settings. Okay so if you do depress the button um, then you'll find that the, the menus run vertically rather than horizontally. So just be aware that if you do uh, press that menu option once it's selected then you'll get a slightly different heads up display. Okay, so as I said, if you um, if you do uh, find one of those shutter speed options that has sub menus uh, such as standard, then just use that rear dial. That basically adjusts anything on the bottom row of the options.
There are some instances where I don't actually use aperture priority as my shoot mode uh, and one of these instances uh, I'm highlighting here. Uh, in some instances I will use manual exposure. Now um, for instance if I'm shooting in um, sunny conditions and my subject is uh, fully illuminated and the exposure of my subject isn't going to change but the background is going to change significantly. This um, uh, raptor is going from uh, a backlit illuminated uh, sky scene over to dark uh, trees. Now this, the, the exposure will jump quite quickly if we're using an auto um, exposure setting such as aperture priority um, uh, program or shutter priority. They'll all jump in exposure because the subject brightness in the viewfinder will change significantly. But the subject hasn't changed its brightness at all. So in these instances we might choose a manual exposure. Now I've set up a, um, a basically a memory function for working in sunny conditions which is one two thousandth of a second at f5.6 which is my widest aperture of my 100-400 lens using an ISO of 320. Now on a sunny day the white clouds in the sky will not clip. They will not become overexposed. Now I will have to modify this setting settings basically if it's not a sunny day, if it's slightly cloudy, uh, I'm going to have to maybe double the ISO setting. If it's a sort of a dark, a cloudy day, I might have to double that ISO again. So, But they are good starting point settings for instances where I will be using manual exposure uh, rather than um, an auto ISO. And this will always ensure the uh, subjects are perfectly exposed even if we're photographing something that's backlit or something that has bright white plumage or even uh, something that has a uh, very dark plumage. Uh, the camera will just maintain the optimum exposure for the ambient lighting conditions. One of the things that I do want to alert you about with focus area is focus area will be completely ignored if you have one of the priority settings switched on. Now face priority and IAF are priority settings that will ignore your focus area. And so what I've done is I've highlighted here where a ball is coming down to a subject now um, you'll see here I've lost a couple of frames in this sequence. Now most of the frames are sharp but I was using maybe a zone focus area uh, with IAF um, uh, switched on. And what has happened is as I'm acquiring the subject because they're front and center and the camera can see an eye, uh, the camera is pulled into sharp focus. But um, as that arm went up and uh, obscured the eye for a very brief period of time, in this instance the camera decided to jump um, to a face that was closer to the center of the focus area. Now um, this can also be a problem for people who are maybe doing motorsports where the primary uh, subject who's wearing a helmet, uh, the eye isn't very visible to the camera. So the camera will pull focus possibly to somebody in the crowd. The new tracking is a little bit stickier than the, lock, the old lock on but it is something to be aware of, uh, if, especially if um, somebody is very close to your primary subject. So one of the things that I would also encourage you to do is put the face priority in AF as an option in the function menu because ever so occasionally you will want to switch that to off. Uh, switching it off doesn't uh, necessarily exclude the benefits of using IAF in continuous autofocus which is now on by default after the version 5 firmware update. If you switch it off you can still have a custom button assigned to IAF and even though face priority is switched on, uh, off IAF will kick back on if you depress a, um, a custom button. This very much instigates the older version 4 firmware uh, workflow if this is something that will improve your workflow in some instances. Okay, let's go over to record media settings. 
obviously we have um, the dual card slot prior to the version 5 firmware update we had limited or more limited options about how we could uh, control what happened between those two cards. Now before we move on and I, I talk about my optimum settings when shooting fast action sports it is important to point out that the lower of the two card slots is the fast faster of the two card slots it will clear the buffer more quickly uh, it will take the SDXC uh, two cards which have faster read write times now um, if you uh, want to uh, get the best possible performance after off that lower slot you will uh, prioritize the recording media to slot one and you'll set the recording mode to standard if you were to set it to simultaneous then you'll basically slow the recording down and be basically working off the performance features of the upper slot which is slot two one of the things that I always wanted with that version 5 firmware upgrade which we got was the ability to auto switch media now this means that if we're shooting a burst of images uh, over a prolonged period of time maybe we're up, up over 100 or 200 frames if that uh, first card slot fills then typically with the version 4 firmware the, ca the camera would stop recording now if we switch auto switch media to on the camera will just carry on recording this time to the upper card and we can then basically when the action stops or we're in between action we could then put the uh, the card that is in the top slot in the lower slot for maximum performance one of the other things that uh, as we're recording and we're looking at a uh, buffer is we can get a visual cue as to how much of the buffer is remaining. Now if you go over to the camera setup to menu, go to continuous shooting length, you can choose one of those options. Uh, now the visual display is basically a, a white vertical bar. This can be made to appear all of the time or only when you're shooting, which is what I've set shoot only display. Now that we've come basically uh, to the end of um, uh, the, the, the memory settings that we've been discussing, uh, while you've got all of those in place, now might be a very good time uh, to program to one of the three possible memories that are stored by the camera. Um, so simply go over to page three on the first camera setup uh, menu and uh, then um, press the center button in the, in the middle of the control wheel and uh, choose one of the three positions to assign that. Now uh, on the A9, unlike the A7 III and the A7R III, we cannot record um, the drive mode and the shoot mode to these memories. Uh, so we do have to remember to put the drive mode and shoot mode top left of the top of the camera into position after selecting the memory. Now in one of my um, A9 ebooks I basically outline all of my preferred uh, settings. Um, I'm about to upgrade that ebook because uh, if you're not using an A9 as a general purpose camera for shooting maybe landscapes, portraits and fast action you may want to prioritize all three memories for various ways of shooting action and uh, these would be my preferred three now you may want to pause uh, the movie uh, if you uh, if you don't want to down um, load my uh, 240 page ebook that outlines these settings the first one is uh, starting point one two thousandths of a second for freezing that's aperture priority remember um, the second one is maybe um, stopping the aperture down and selecting um, a slower shutter speed maybe appropriate for um, action sports where we're panning the camera and the third one is those manual settings now the, the starting point is sunny weather so you will have to uh, bump the ISO if you're working in dark or ambient conditions what I would do is if you are working with the manual exposure is just take one shot uh, chimp on the back of the camera to see where your histogram is lying and then make an adjustment. Uh, the obviously the the adjustment that I would be looking at making is to keep uh, cloud, white clouds in a sky bright white but without overexposing.
If you're um, uh, wanting to um, uh, record more than the three memories that the camera will take, just remember we can uh, assign memories to M1 to M4. These are recorded to the memory card. Word of warning, when you reformat the memory card, they will be deleted. You can back them up on your computer um, and have them on a, on a card uh, that you keep in your uh, camera bag. I have a movie on this workflow. It's called Total Recall if you're wanting to get into this in a little bit more detail. Now typically if I am saving memories to a card I will go onto that page 3 of the first camera setup and choose slot 2. I tend to reformat uh, that um, slot 2 card much less frequently and um, that is the um, uh, if I am carrying a card in my bag with additional memories I will quickly uh, eject uh, the card that is in slot 2 and um, draw the, the memory off that uh, upper slot. I can always put it in to a working memory on one, two or three of the camera. Again, that total recall memory will outline that workflow in detail. Now, there are instances where your starting point settings or your memory settings become inappropriate to the action that is unfolding. For instance, I was recording lots of swimmers come running out of the water. Um, occasionally, um, somebody um, uh, would stop in the water to start removing their wetsuit because the bicycle leg of the triathlon then uh, follows this one. So uh, sometimes you don't want to be shooting a stationary subject at 20 frames per second. Now, uh, there is a very quick way of overriding things that we have on that uh, 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 dial for either drive mode or focus mode. And we can do this simply by holding down a custom key uh, to override those uh, primary settings momentarily if that is just a, a break in the continuity of what we're doing. So I'd just like to um, finish up this movie by talking you through that workflow. It's called Register Custom Shoot Settings and this is a really valuable feature for people shooting with A9 cameras that need to override. Think about maybe we're about to do birds in flight at 20 frames per second but when we're starting the bird is sitting stationary. We don't want to be shooting the bird uh, stationary at 20 frames per second. So we do want to create a custom override where we may be just taking one um, shot each time we press the shutter release and then when we release that um, custom key that we've assigned uh, then it goes back to the default which is to shoot at 20 frames per second. So um, press the center button to enter that and then we've got three choices. We've got three options for recording up to 10 camera settings to override what we're currently using. Now when we do that we do have to hold the custom key down all of the time we're overriding but it is still a valuable feature. Now go into that. We don't need to use all 10. In fact very rarely do I use uh, all 10. I will typically only use one, two or three of the overrides for instance in the in the example that I showed with that figure stationary in the water simply what I'd be looking to do is to override the continuous shooting and go into single shooting so you need to uncheck all of the boxes that you don't want to use and only check that one and then select the alternative um, so move away from continuous and go into single shooting in this example uh, cycle down if you're a back button AF user then you'll also need to use AF on as well because you're not going to be pressing a custom key with your thumb and also pressing the AF on button. So we can link AF on button to the override option if that makes sense. Uh, I'll just go back to that slide. You also need to register that. Uh, if you don't register that, that won't be held in the memory. So make sure you do hit register after making your options. We then need to uh, go into the custom keys and assign a custom key to, re, um, to recall that custom setting. Recall custom hold one is what we're looking for and you'll find that on page one of four uh, if you're looking for that option to pick up uh, for that uh, custom key. So um, I would typically, I'll just go back again, I would typically uh, use the AEL button uh, for for me 
but uh, if that isn't something that you can use because it's already assigned to something else you are going to uh, be looking for a custom key that you can hold down easily whilst pressing the shutter release so there are only a limited number of choices in that option uh, typically the AF on or AEL some people might be able to manage to depress the center button on that control wheel um, as well Okay, so there is something to uh, food for thought anyway, something to think about, but I do really value this recall custom hold feature. If you're looking to get um, completely to grips with your A9 book, just remember I have a free 240 page ebook uh, that you can download, and you can download this from my website. If you find the book uh, valuable, as some people have, just consider making a small donation because I am supporting uh, the Sony Alpha community. If you're flat broke because you've uh, been buying too many lenses and a camera, uh, it is a free download. So I am happy for you to download it. But it, if, if it has made you a better photographer, by, by all means, um, just show your gratitude. You can access that book by just going to my website and then just clicking on the download section. Um, this website is full of support materials for the Sony Alpha community. So you're not just going to find this ebook, you're going to find um, presets, actions, um, you're going to find lots of uh, interesting blog posts to read, access to hundreds of movies which are also on my uh, Mark Gala Sony Alpha uh, Creative Skills uh, YouTube channel. Um, and um, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, as I said, um, um, it is quite a lot to uh, think about, but um, remember you can assign most of this stuff um, to um, the memories, the custom keys, the function menus. So you can get into um, a workflow where you're not thinking so much about the camera, you're constantly concentrating on capturing the fast moving action and this is really what it's all about. Okay, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Alpha Imaging Ambassador.